land pass filter design and body plot example using op-amp. In this example, um, this uh, band pass filter design with using one op-amp is given. We want to find the transfer function from input to the output and then sketch the body plot. And then after that, we want to find the time domain response Vout if input is unit step function and also the output at time zero and the output at time infinity with this input. And lastly, we want to figure out the steady state response uh, when input is 2 cosine 500t. Okay, um, this uh, op amp is intuitively uh, a bandpass filter because when the frequency is near zero, uh, this Im the impedance of this uh, capacitor is nearly infinite. So there is nothing from input that can go to the output, so the output goes to zero. So it cannot pass the low frequency components. And at the very high frequency, the impedance of this capacitor goes to nearly zero. It, it's a short. The same thing with this guy. This capacitor in super high frequency has a near zero impedance, which will short this point to the output. And if the op amp is in um, linear region of operation, not saturated, then for this ideal op amp, the virtual short between the two terminals should hold. And therefore, the voltage here should be equal to here zero. And because at high frequency, this impedance is short, therefore the output voltage is also nearly zero. So it doesn't, it cannot have non-zero output uh, at very high frequency. Um, so that's why it's a bandpass uh, filter uh, intuitively. But let's figure out the transfer function. So part one for transfer function, this assuming that this op amp is operating in linear region of operation, then the virtual short between the two input terminals should hold. So here is zero, this should be zero. It's a simple uh, non -inver it's, it's a simple inverting amplifier in which the uh, response from input to output is just the gain of the amplifier. Let's assume that this whole resistor here is the feedback resistor RF. And let's say this is equivalently the input impedance um, R in. So we can say uh, this is the output impedance, input impedance, and we can say the uh, transfer function H of S is just V O S, V in S. These are Laplace domain representation is just simply for an inverting amplifier op amp base is just minus RF over R in, minus RF over R in, or ZF over ZN. Now, for uh, the uh, feedback impedance, it's just a uh, one over C2S, the impedance of this capacitor parallel with the 200K. So we have uh, the minus sign, and then we have R2 parallel with one over C2S, and then for denominator, we have this Zn or R in, and that is the series of these two impedances, which is simply R1 plus one over C1s. So it's gonna be R1 plus one over C1s. Rewriting this, this simply becomes minus. This is R2 over R2 C2s plus one, so it's just R2. This is R1 C1s plus one, denominator C1s goes to the numerator, so R2 C1s divided by R1 C1s um, plus 1 and times R2 uh, C2s plus 1. So this is the um, H of S and now let's compute R2C1 is just simply uh, 200K times C1, 200 nanofarad, which is 200K ohm times 200 nanofarad, which turn out to be 40 uh, times 10 to the minus three, or simply 40 millisecond. And then R, uh, that is R2C1 in the numerator, R1C1 here is just uh, 20k uh, times C1, that guy, which is 200 um, nanofarad, 
which turn out to be 4 times 10 to the minus 3, which is 4 millisecond. And finally, we have um, our uh, 2C2, which is here, and that is 200K uh, times 5 nanofarads. So this turned out to be just 1 millisecond. So replacing these guys, we get uh, HOS is minus 40 10 to the minus 3s divided by um, 4 10 to the minus 3s plus 1, 10 to the minus 3s plus 1. And if you rewrite this, you get H of S, or in, um, transfer function from input to output in S domain representation is simply minus um, 10 to the 4 S over S plus uh, 250 times S plus 1000. It has one zero at frequency zero, and it has two poles at minus 250 and minus 1000. Um, okay, and the body plot of this guy, when we, we want to assume body plot, we effectively uh, represent um, using S equal to J omega, so it is minus 10 to the 4, uh, J omega, uh, J omega plus 250, and J omega plus 1000. Okay, so what happens is, um, if we want to represent, say, this is omega axis, and this is 20 log 10, a magnitude of h of j omega. In this case, at frequency 0, it's uh, 0, and 20 log 10 becomes minus infinity. So it comes from uh, inf minus infinity, but then uh, we, at frequency near 0, we are far away from these two poles. So this guy is the only one that matters, and this means the magnitude is proportional to the frequency, hence uh, 20 dB per decade would be increasing magnitude response uh, near frequency zero at low frequency. So it's going to be 20 dB per decade every 10 times increase in frequency resulting in increase of 20 dB in magnitude. Uh, up to the point that we get to, let's say, close to 250 here. Now, at this point, this guy kicks in as an approximation The 20 dB increase by this guy is canceled out by this, so it becomes a flat response as an approximation in body plot that goes on when up to the point that we get omega uh, nearly 1000. At that point, you have two poles kicking in compared to one zero, so now things start going down with the 20 dB per decade uh, slope. So it's gonna be minus 20 dB Per decade, and this is another representation of the bandpass response of this filter. Effectively, in real life, the response of this filter will look like something like this. Um, right. So, this this body plot is just the approximation uh, of that. So we can see that this should peak at some at, at a frequency between 250 and 1000 radian per second. Um, Okay, so this would be uh, the body plot for uh, magnitude response. Um, for phase response, uh, again, at near frequency zero, we can forget about these guys. It has um, a negative sign that is 180 degree, and then we have a J. So effectively, it has a, at near frequency zero, it has a phase of minus 90 degree. And then as we move on toward a higher frequency, getting close to 250 and then 1000, these guys kick in. And uh, for this one, we will have another uh, 90 degree reduction in phase and this one another 90 degree. But that is not the focus of this example. So we are done with transfer function representation and also body plot. Now, now let's go to number two, which is finding V out if input is unit step function. So for two, we know V out Laplace domain representation is just H of S times V in S. V out, uh, this is H of S, this guy, and V in S, given that V in T is UT, we know that the Laplace domain representation of this is 1 over S. So 
it's going to be 1 over s times this guy. So this is 1 over s because v in is ut. As a result, v out of s, this multiplied by that, the numerator s cancel out by this denominator s. So um, v out of s becomes minus 10 to the 4 divided by uh, s plus 250, s plus 1000. Now, v out t is just Laplace inverse of this guy. And we use partial fraction expansion for this here. So what we get is, um, let's take minus 10 to the 4 outside and do the partial fraction expansion. So Laplace inverse of uh, s plus 250 plus s plus 1000. And in order to get back to this guy, we just need a 1 here, and then we need a minus 1, so that when uh, we have s plus 1000 in the numerator here, and s plus, minus s minus 250 here, so s with minus s cancel out. And in order to get to this guy, which is factor out, we just need 1000 minus 250, uh, so 750 here. So the answer is um, minus 40 over 3, Laplace inverse of this guy and that this is Laplace inverse of this inverse of this uh, function is simply e to the minus 250 t ut plus for this one uh, minus minus e to the minus 1000 t ut okay as expected we expect a transient response uh, and intuitively, this makes sense. I mean, let's just, let's just write it down because the question is asking for v out at time zero and v out steady state at time infinity given this input of a unit step function. So um, v out at time zero is just e to the zero minus e to the zero becomes zero. And v out at time infinity, both of these components goes to zero, so it's zero. Now it makes sense because Intuitively, input is unit step function, so there is a limited jump at time zero, which is from zero to one. The unit step function is just going from zero to one at time zero. That is a limited jump, uh, and it's a, uh, just a super high frequency component at time zero, sudden jump. So, and we know this is a bandpass filter, it, it cannot pass that. So that's why at the beginning, when output is zero, with this jump, nothing happened. So, at time zero, output stays zero. Gradually, uh, according to this function, gradually start going up. But then in infinity, unit step function stays flat. So it's like a DC at infinity. And we know that this is bandpass. So if there is an input constant, finally output goes to zero because it's a bandpass, which is in line with this. So intuitively, these answers also make sense. Um, okay, so what about number three? Well, we already have h of j omega. Um, uh, in number three, input is assumed to be um, v n two cosine omega t, which omega is just 500 radian per second. So given that, we just need to, um, the model that we have is a LTI system with response h of j omega. And we want to find the output. The input given this is just two phase zero because there is no phase for this guy. And we just need to find the magnitude and phase of the output. We know that uh, it would be just the two phase zero times this complex number. So um, we just need to find h of j omega, which is by replacing um, so h of j omega is 500 because it's two, co it's two times cosine 500 t. So we just need to find that. So minus 10 to the 4 times j 500 divided by j 500 plus 250 times j 500 plus 1000. If you uh, just multiply and simplify this, you get to minus eight so and phase of zero so it means uh, the answer would be uh, two phase zero times eight 
minus 8 phase 0, which is effectively phase of 80 degree, 180 degrees. So the outcome would be, if you want to write it down, would be um, 16 phase of uh, 180 degree, or just minus 16. That would be the output um, for the phase 0. So the output would be effectively minus 16 cosine 500 T. That's the steady state output or V out when input is 200 cosine 500 T. Hope this helps.